back to the channel now. I had a rant about Gatwick Airport, nearly 100,000 views, quite surprising, but uh, obviously the whole drone issue and the whole media issue and the whole police issue is a big one. And I'd, I'd hoped that with Gatwick done and dusted, that would be the end of it. But no, it's the first day of 2019 and here in New Zealand, we've had our own kind of version of that, mini version of that. But all the three elements are still there. Drones, um, police, and a media that's totally out of control. And I'm gonna explain it to you, right? I'm gonna read you some headlines from the papers here in New Zealand over the last day or so. Drone almost downs police helicopter. Near miss with drone, it could have been a catastrophe. Um, drone near collision with police helicopter could result in tighter regulations. And police call for drone crackdown. Okay, so what happened? Well, let me fill you in on the details. The Auckland police have a helicopter called the Eagle Police Helicopter, and it was flying over the city. Now, this is the city, this is the urban area, so there's lots of street lights, there's car headlights, there's, there's building lights, there's signage, all sorts of lights shining up at them from below, from the ground below. And they were flying over in the early hours of New Year's Day, and they almost collided with the drone. That's the report, that's the allegation. I'm going to look closely at that in a moment, but almost collided with a drone. Now, in the official police press release, they said that the police helicopter came within 10 metres, 10 metres of a drone, and that this was very, very dangerous, so they immediately returned to base and suspended operations for the night. Okay. However, later on in some of the press releases, a police spokesman said it was 5 metres. Well, hang on a minute. Now, if you're a police person, if you're a policeman, you've got to deal with facts and evidence. You've got to be precise. Was it 10 or was it 5? An official press release said 10, and then a spokesman said 5. Are they making this up? Are they just trying to hype it up and make it worse and worse by getting that drone closer and closer? And let's face it, I've spoken to a number of people who have flown at night over, over built-up areas, and they've confirmed to me that it is almost, it would be almost impossible to see a drone below you because of all that background light, all that ground clutter, the lighting is so distracting compared to the four little LEDs on a commercial store-bought drone so it really sort of this is an allegation there's no proof and it gets worse because we're talking about a police helicopter this is a sophisticated state-of-the-art modern helicopter it will have a flare camera it will have all sorts of other cameras and gizmos on board that will enable it to detect and record this type of thing so was there any video of this drone no <laughs> was there were there any photos of this drone no surprising isn't it that Despite this high techery on board this helicopter and the fact that the drone came within five meters, they couldn't even get a picture of it. Couldn't even get any video of it. What the hell? You see, I'm skeptical here because I've seen so many instances where pilots have said, we saw a drone and it turns out to be a shopping bag or a, 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 a fruit bat or nothing at all. I mean, pilots have a very, very poor track record of credibility when it comes to seeing drones from aircraft and helicopters. So. One has to simply look at the history to add a value, a weight to the credence or the, the, the credibility of what the pilots are saying. And to be honest, I don't believe them. Now, I could be wrong. And I have to say right at the outset here, if there was a drone and it was flown at night above 400 feet in proximity to a police helicopter, then the operator of that drone should be arrested and I believe they should be imprisoned. It's absolutely reckless behavior. I do not endorse it or condone it in any way, and I don't think anyone in the drone community would. It is outrageously reckless. So just got that off my chest. I'm not here to protect people that are doing bad things. What I'm here to do is to call the media to account and call the police and the pilots to account for the hysteria that they're creating. Now, let's look a little bit further. Um, according to the reports, pilots are calling for tougher regulations around drones to prevent more near misses, like the close call in Auckland City on New Year's Day. Well, <laughs> pilots, do you not understand that there are already regulations? Have you not read the regulations? There are regulations that should, that this, if there was a drone, then it was flown illegally. It was in breach of the regulations. Firstly, it was flown at night, and you're not allowed to fly a drone at night except as a shielded operation, which means you fly below the level of the treetops. And if you're up high menacing a police helicopter, you're not shielded, so you've broken the rules. Secondly, um, you have to fly, you have to get the permission of the property owner over which you operate. This was flown over the central city and I doubt that the drone operator had permission of the property owners to fly over their land. So another breach of the regulations. And again, another thing was that this helicopter 
was flying at 1,400 feet, according to the police report. And um, I should just mention another press or another statement made by Tim Robinson. Tim Robinson. Honestly, if you want my opinion, this guy is an idiot. My honest opinion, he's an utter idiot. Um, I've tried to engage with Mr. Robinson on a number of occasions by email, and I would like to challenge him to a face-to-face -face debate in the media over this whole thing. Mr. Robinson is the head of the New Zealand Airline Pilots Association. He's looking out for his members, not for their safety, but for their livelihoods. He knows that drones are coming and they're gonna take a lot of commercial pilots jobs. So he has to look after his membership. So he can see where it's coming from, but it doesn't mean he should be engaging in all this ridiculous hysteria that he's created. He's come out and said, um, he wants changes such as restricting the altitude at which drones can be flown and compulsory registration. Okay, let's look at those two things. Um, he thinks that re restricting the altitude at which drones can be flown would solve this problem. Well, no, the helicopter is flying at 1,400 feet. And already in New Zealand, the regulations say you must fly no higher than 400 feet. So if this drone was within five meters of that police helicopter, it was already 1,000 feet higher than it was legally allowed to be. So how would restricting the altitude even further, change that. The pilot or operator of the drone, if there was one, is either arrogant or ignorant. And in either case, lowering the altitude at which drones can legally be flown would have made no difference at all. Also, registration, compulsory registration. Let's assume that all drones in New Zealand already had to be registered, or the owners had to be registered, okay? If, if Mr. Robinson has his way, that's what will happen. So how would that have changed the situation on New Year's Day? Well, they didn't they didn't catch a drone, they didn't find a drone. So how the hell would registration make any difference? They've still got no number. So registration would have made zero difference. So Mr. Robinson is talking through a hole in his head. He doesn't know what he's talking about because these things that he claims would fix things would have made no difference, no difference whatsoever. Hmm. Okay, so let's take a look then. We've got the police calling for harsher regulation. They want tougher regulation on drones so that this doesn't happen again. <laughs> and we've already shown that the regulations exist. The regulations were broken. Tougher regulations will make no difference. You think the police would know this, don't you? But apparently not. Apparently not. And let's look at the UK situation again. Now, if you looked at my Gatwick rant, you'll see that there were over 2,000 comments on that video. And a great percentage of those comments were basically saying the police in the UK are crap. You know, they, they, they don't do their job and, you know, the, the, why couldn't they catch this drone? And they made all these false statements, arrested the wrong people, and then they admitted it could have been their drones flying. So you'd think, well, you know, um, New Zealand police have got to be better than that, right? Absolutely have to be better than that. Well, I'll fill you in on some background. Um, the New Zealand police, I, I know a couple of policemen. They're really good people. They work as hard as they can um, to the, com the, the limits of their capacity to do the job that they're hired to do. Really good people. But, but as, a, as an entity, as a body, the New Zealand police force is also somewhat lacking. On a number of occasions in recent times, the police themselves, as a group, have been found to be acting un unlawfully. Unlawfully. What does that mean? What's unlawfully mean? Um, well, obviously there are laws that people are supposed to follow. Now, if you or I break the laws, then we've been deemed to be acting illegally and we get hoisted up in court and we get fined or we get thrown in jail because we've acted illegally. However, if the police do the same thing, if they break the laws, it's not illegal, it's unlawful. And there's a subtle difference. When something's unlawful, no one is ever held to account. No one ever gets put in jail. No one ever gets fined. It's just, oh, we've, we've made a mistake. We've learned from this and we're moving forward. It's like, get out of jail free. Well, the police have one of those. So they have, on a number of occasions, acted unlawfully as deemed by the courts, but the courts can't sanction them. The courts can just say, you've, you've broken the law. And they go, so what? Um, which is not a good look. And it doesn't result in a culture of compliance. So the police, as a group, not as individuals, but as a group, I'm not too impressed with, based on their track record recently in New Zealand. But let's have a look at how they compare to the UK police, because this is important. Now, in Peterborough, in the UK, earlier this year, a police helicopter saw a drone. Now, the police helicopter was involved in a search and rescue operation at night, looking for somebody, and a drone appeared and flew close to the police helicopter. So, unlike the New Zealand police, the UK police didn't rush away and hide, didn't land and call off operations and lock themselves in a cell to protect them from the evil drone that they saw. No, they used their technology. They videoed the drone. So there was some evidence that there was a drone. Hey, what a good idea. New Zealand police couldn't think of that. And then they followed the drone back to where it landed because helicopters can stay up for hours. Drones can only stay up for minutes. So they bided their time, followed the drone back, saw where it landed, sent in some ground 
forces, arrested the guy, and he appeared in court and was charged on a number of offences relating to the aviation regulations that he'd broken by flying his drone. He was fined, and they took his drone off him. Case closed. Mm, good work, UK police. Compare that to the New Zealand police. They scream like little girls, ruffle their panties, run back to the police station, hide in a cell because they saw an evil drone. And they couldn't use any of their fancy and very expensive technology to video the drone. They couldn't use their brains to follow the drone. Remember, they must have been able to follow it because they saw it. They saw it against all that backdrop and clutter and they had FLIR cameras and things. Why couldn't they do what the UK police did? Everyone's saying the UK police are a complete waste of time. Well, what does that say about the New Zealand police if they can't even do what the UK police managed very successfully to achieve? And now we've got the police wanting tougher regulations. Why? Well, because you're not going to enforce them, are you? You're just going to run away and hide. This is somewhat akin to the police being called to a bank robbery and a robber comes out with a gun and the police see it and run away and hide. No, that's not the way the police are supposed to work. You're supposed to be out there protecting the public. And if these drones are a threat, why are you running away and hiding as soon as you see one? It's, it's really not good enough. And all the regulations in the world will be of no effect if the police just run away and hide every time a drone's seen. Oh, it is like... Seriously! Oh. And of course the media, as I say, hyping this out of hysteria, giving the New Zealand Airline Pilots Association plenty of airtime when, when it's obvious that Mr Robinson doesn't even know what the current rules are and doesn't even know that 1,400 feet is actually higher than 400 feet. Oh. So here we are, as I say, first day of 2019 and the vilification of drones continues. Um, the lack of evidence in these allegations continues. And our police force shown itself to be completely incapable of even staying around when there's a drone, you know. <laughs> so, I don't know, what do you guys think? Is, is this got to end? This has to end soon. Surely this has to end. Now, I've emailed a number of the, drone, of the media here in New Zealand. Most of them have completely ignored me. One of them actually um, did a brief interview in, where I basically said that the regulations are more than adequate at the moment. They just need to be enforced. But I've got like 20 seconds of airtime and all these other people have had hours of airtime because the media just doesn't want to cover the, the realities. They clickbait, clickbait headlines, you know, these headlines. Headl headlines, you know, as I say, this, the best one is um, near miss with drone, it could have been catastrophic. <laughs> really? That is hysteria. Hysteria. That's what we're dealing with. So what do I do? I'm tempted to set up a website and another YouTube channel in which I will analyse each and every one of these ridiculous cases as they come to bear, pull it apart like I have with this one, and ask the serious questions, because the media is not going to do it. The media does not ask questions anymore. They do not challenge the statements made by people. Like They should have challenged Mr Robinson's statements and said, well, how will reducing the altitude make any difference when this drone was already, if it was one, operating at well above the legal limit? Uh, that we don't have reporters anymore. We really don't. We just have, I don't know, public relations people. Um, working for the pilots and the police and the papers themselves. There you go. Anyway, that's enough for a first day of 2019. It's terrible. Thank you for watching. Now, if you want more of these rants, I'm sure there will be because the crap just keeps on coming, then please um, subscribe and you'll make sure you get them. lots of other stuff on this channel as well. So go back and have a look. I do rants, but I do other stuff. I fly model aircraft. I fly drones. I talk about all sorts of things. Um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up because we want YouTube to, uh, to track it and uh, you know, recommend it to others, and put it on social media, link to it on Facebook and other things, because it's important this message gets out. Fortunately, the, I think the Gatwick story did wake the public up to quite an extent to the level at which this hysteria has been cultivated by the media, and to the level to which facts are being invented by the authorities. So here's another case, here's another example. We need to keep that rolling out through social media so that people become aware that they're actually being conned. There's a giant con job going on here, let me remind you, the one most important thing about recreational multi-rotor multi drones. The death toll from the recreational use of multi-rotor drones remains at zero. Yet, if you listen to the Airline Pilots Association, the police and the media, they are just so dangerous. Doesn't add up, does it? Thanks for watching. Catch you again soon. Bye for now.